welcome uh, to Tuesday, uh, another podcast here for you today. Uh, joining me uh, uh, by the power of the internet uh, from, <laughs> from Indiana uh, is James Stevens. Uh, he is the Director of Advocacy and Educational Resources for Music for All. James, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mark, for having me. And it's fantastic that you're doing these, uh, these episodes, these shows. It's really cool. Yeah, it's great. We, we love to connect with folks like you who are out there uh, doing things, um, especially at the, at the national level. So um, James is with Music for All. So many of you would know one of their signature programs, which is uh, Bands of America, marching band um, championships all throughout the fall. But there's so many other things that Music for All does. Uh, James, kind of give us the, the, the overview of what is Music for All. Yeah, happy to. So at Music for All, our mission is to create, provide, and expand positively life-changing experiences through Music for All. Uh, and we have a vision, which is to be a catalyst to ensure that every child across America has access and opportunity to be engaged in uh, active music making in his or her scholastic environment. And Especially uh, today, the reality is the, you know, scholastic environments uh, look uh, different. There's a lot of different realities today. Uh, we are dedicated, Music for All is dedicated to building teachers, uh, celebrating teachers and building leaders, student leaders. Um, we, uh, as you mentioned, Mark, uh, folks probably know us uh, from our Bands of America Fall Championships, where uh, typically, we would have 20-some uh, marching band events across the country that would culminate with the Grand National Championships uh, in Indianapolis. Uh, this, uh, we are, the company is in our 45th year. Um, we uh, have a national concert festival uh, that occurs every, uh, every spring, winter time in, in March, which is a national uh, concert band festival, orchestra festival, choir festival, uh, chamber music, uh, percussion ensembles, uh, as well as some honor uh, ensembles, honor band, choir, uh, and jazz and orchestra. Um, uh, we started actually, uh, our very first national program was the Summer Symposium, originally in Whitewater, Wisconsin. Uh, we now are um, happy to be uh, at Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana, uh, where this would have been our 45th uh, summer symposium. Uh, student um, divisions and a director's academy uh, that, of course, unfortunately was canceled in June with the uh, COVID realities being what they are. Um, but uh, yeah, so again, building leaders, celebrating teachers through a kind of culminating performance opportunities and uh, spotlighting uh, some of the best um, examples of what uh, student uh, musical performances are uh, capable of. So one of the events you talked about, the National Concert Band Festival, um, was was actually happening right as uh, as the nation shut down. And you guys had to react very quickly in the middle of that. Um, talk to us a little bit about how you reacted there and then how the, the organization reacted, you know, after that. Yeah, we were probably the worst possible week to have the National Festival this year, um, that week of March 9th. <clears throat> um, if it was a week earlier or a week later, uh, the realities of, of how we dealt with it would have, would have been uh, certainly different. Uh, going into it, we were extremely excited, Mark, because it was the largest, it was going to be the largest festival in our history. Uh, we were going to serve more than 3,300 student participants, and I think it was like more than 80 different ensembles, as I mentioned, the orchestra, choir, uh, band, chamber. Um, and it's, a, it's, you know, for those that don't know, it's a non-competitive event. Um, and uh, so going into it, we had uh, a few different realities. We had some folks that uh, school districts were not uh, allowing them to travel. And so we had uh, just really going into that week, some that were pulling out at, the, at very much the last minute. Uh, we had some that did make it on site and, and were with us. Uh, and then we, as things started to escalate, there was one night in particular where uh, our staff was on the phone and basically if you're on the road, turn your buses around, mm -hmm. uh, don't come to Indy. It was, uh, 
it was that kind of a you know reaction. Um, the the outpouring of just understanding, you know, we, the ensembles that were with us on site really truly had uh, the time of their life. They were just uh, they continue to just uh, correspond with with me and my colleagues on just how uh, impressed they were with being able to uh, make. Uh, swift accommodations to uh, allow it, giving them performance opportunities, changing things around um, and uh, giving them, you know, as much as we could within the uh, context of their being with us in Indianapolis. <clears throat> when it, when it was all said and done and we did uh, have to uh, close up shop early um, you know, that kind of thing is a little, is, I'm not going to lie, is, is, is kind of catastrophic on the organization in terms of just uh, finances um, with, uh, you know, hotel rooms. Uh, our, you know, we have probably about 200 different um, evaluators, clinicians, conductors, composers that, that are, work with all the different ensembles. Uh, some of them at the last minute couldn't show up. You know, there was collegiate uh, you know, there was universities that basically uh, was uh, forbidding travel for their professors. Uh, some were with us, some didn't come. Some, again, we told to turn around. Um, and uh, it was, uh, it was, you know, it was an example of servant leadership, I think, mm -hmm. and mission and vision driven folks. I'm speaking about my colleagues who just moved mountains to make, uh, to make things as, uh, as comfortable as possible for all of the uh, participating students, directors, and of course, all of our wonderful uh, team of, of, of faculty. Um, it's interesting because after uh, sort of the dust, I don't know if the dust has even settled yet, but uh, there are people that are still asking about the 2021 festival this March. And uh, we have extended the deadline uh, for uh, the application process, which is, you know, submitting a recording similar to, you know, like the Midwest clinic process mm -hmm. or, or, or whatnot. Um, and we've actually made allowances to typically it's like a recording of your ensemble from the past school year, but you know, in the spring, right a lot of folks, you know, were not able to do that. So we've allowed it to go uh, further back. But I mean, I, I would be uh, foolish to say, I, you know, we are, we've extended the deadline, but I, I don't know what, what travel, uh, you know, district policies and things will bring. So um, we uh, look forward to a day where uh, the national festival, we can celebrate uh, young students and, and their, uh, their work and, and whether it's this March or in the future, uh, that's still uh, uncertain, but we're, we're working to do what we can. And so I think the, the, the theme there was flexibility. You guys were immediately flexible and, and in that moment, um, you know, made things happen. Uh, that flexibility has continued in then what the organization has done. So you kind of changed uh, we, we've talked a couple times and you say we've you know we're an event planning association with and we don't know if we can plan events and and how we can plan events because that's so uncertain but you guys said okay we're still going to to serve the profession we're going to serve those who are our constituents um done a lot of online programming a lot of things give us kind of the brief sketch of what's available for folks out there on how you guys have pivoted and what you've done yeah so exactly flexibility and we certainly have pivoted um so our, our summer symposium, as I mentioned, would have been, would have happened that last full week in June, uh, and of course was was canceled. And, per, and at the point of canceling um, the live event, we uh, pivoted that to uh, what we are calling or continue to call because we're doing it all summer. Essentially, is uh, summer sessions and uh, leadership lessons, which are just online. Um, asynchronous videos and e-courses rather than a live event. So we kicked that off uh, on June 1st and literally, Mark, every week we have had uh, new uh, programming to roll out, new, uh, new materials uh, in the curriculum. Uh, certainly leadership is of the, of the forefront. Uh, directors, educators can look at uh, some of these leadership lessons and uh, sort of a la carte determine what they want to you know share with their students either online or in the uh, in the uh, you know 
ensemble room setting if, if that is happening. Uh, our drum major institute uh, happened. Uh, that one was kind of more of a, a live uh, event that last week. Uh, about 600, 800 kids that uh, uh, attended that. The uh, curriculum for color guard, music production, concert band, uh, our, our wonderful uh, Yamaha performing artists have given uh, so much of their time uh, to uh, present some of these online uh, sessions as well as some uh, from the Army Field Band actually. Uh, and just all of our uh, summer symposium faculty and division heads have been <clears throat> very gracious to just provide uh, these things. And as, as you mentioned, Mark, it's, 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 they're online and they're free. Um, and uh, musicforall.org. Yes, and actually we have a new uh, site of educational resources, uh, which is under the Music for All uh, umbrella, but it's education.musicforall.org. We uh, accelerated the release of that educational resource site um, during the spring as social distancing measures were, were, were taking place. Uh, so in early April, we uh, launched the new site, which features just uh, it's our home of new, you know, free resources featuring things like videos and articles and publications. Um, but one of the things that I did want to share is some of these uh, webinars, again, to talk about pivot and just kind of new programming when you're an event, you know, uh, kind of production company that is not operating events right now. Uh, we're using our educational, um, uh, you know, uh, consultants to help us design some other things. There was a Patterns for Success uh, webinar that was uh, about uh, nine weeks of uh, student leadership development and also drum major training. Uh, during the spring, we started to get questions from folks going, how do we, how do we train our drum majors mm -hmm. when, when uh, we don't have an opportunity to you know, see them in the, in the real space? So uh, Patterns for Success, that nine week uh, uh, session is available online. It's, it was live, but now is recorded uh, and you can check that out. We did a, uh, I know he's uh, my Jedi master of all things advocacy and probably yours as well, but uh, Bob Morrison and Robert W. Smith came together <clears throat> to present a uh, webinar uh, which was titled What Now and How? which was really presented by industry leaders, uh, kind of delivering solutions for instrumental music education during COVID. And that uh, is recorded and available online, but one of the uh, you know, more important pieces on that site is uh, if you take a look at uh, uh, our COVID-19 resources page there, there's a lot of just you know, documentation on um, uh, what different organizations are doing now as a response to uh, safety and uh, you know testing of uh, you know wind particles and and, and performing of uh, instruments and and the the social distancing. Uh, a couple other webinars that I'm excited to share with you and uh, your viewers is. Uh, one that we've called with a little help from mm -hmm. my friends, which is an unscripted uh, kind of live forum where each time is a different panel of friends, um, music, uh, music educators uh, that uh, are there to discuss any topic, really. Uh, people will submit questions in advance online, but one of the cool aspects to that particular web series is the fact that you can call in like a radio show uh, type uh, forum where you will take the call on, on live on, on the air and you can uh, uh, ask your question and visit with the uh, the friends in real time, and those are uh, recorded and also available on the site. And then um, this one is uh, pretty special. It's it's student teaching 2020. It's actually called Mind the Gap. This uh, web series, and we actually have a a, a new one that airs tonight, um, was designed for future music educators and young teachers. Uh, but those especially whose student teaching experience was impacted by the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've started that this summer and we're going all the way through December uh, as we know that the fall will um, uh, no doubt impact some uh, student teachers or some um, young 
teachers just starting the profession. Uh, so uh, the first couple episodes were about the interviewing process at the at the district level and the local level. Uh, so we're uh, uh, excited to offer that. And then uh, two kind of newer ones, which I don't know if you're, Mark, even aware, uh, you might be hearing these for the first time, uh, is our, our buddy Scott Edgar, who is really the uh, um, the guru for social emotional mm -hmm. learning uh, these days, written uh, a book that I have on my shelf right over there, uh, published by GIA. Um, but uh, we are developing uh, an inter uh, an interactive clearinghouse on our site that is um, the centerpiece, but doing some video podcasts uh, led by Scott Edgar uh, and others uh, that are. Um, you know, the teaching music through performance series that is also a GIA thing. Mm -hmm. think, think that kind of mentality. It's uh, teaching SEL, teaching social emotional learning through music. So it's, it's again, composer based. And uh, again, there's so many composers out there that have pivoted and shifted a little bit to, you know, chamber music and smaller ensembles and, and, and being, um, uh, responsive to just the uh, environments of, of, of large ensemble, uh, but, but first and foremost, just the fact that we know music and arts are social and emotional. You know, uh, Dr. Edgar's approach obviously is being intentional in those things, and so uh, we think that this series is something that is really going to be helpful, uh, no doubt, for, for the profession. Uh, and then the last web series, and as I go through these, I'm just like, gosh, we're doing, we're doing a lot. There you uh, are. And I, and I understand that there's people out there that are just, you know, Zoom fatigue and web fatigue and all this kind of stuff, but uh, hopefully there's something out there for everybody. Uh, but this one came from our friends at the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra uh, that uh, it's, a con it's a conducting symposium. Uh, so Indianapolis hmm. Symphony and Music for All uh, pairing together to prevent or not prevent, to present, rather, a four-day conducting symposium for students in high school and college, uh, kind of curated and led by the uh, ISO uh, associate conductor, uh, Jacob Joyce. Um, it's, it's, it's designed to con you know, cover fundamentals of conducting and score study and, and all those kinds of things, but it's almost our orchestra you know, committee basically said, you know, in, in the way that band students get a chance to learn this if they want to be a drum major and, and, and that kind of thing, it's like, well, what about the, what about the string kids, you know? So this is, sure. this is designed for them so that they can uh, look at it uh, from, from just, you know, everything from conducting and all that, but, but, but really just the, uh, the art of conducting, but even more so probably the, uh, the job and the responsibility that a uh, artistic director or a symphony orchestra conductor does on a, on a, on a normal basis. So that's, it's, it's something that we're looking forward to and it's going to happen here uh, later this month, uh, the week of July 20th. So like I said, that's, that, that's a lot, uh, a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, and and it's and it's a it's diverse stuff, which is which I think is really cool. And we'll post the the website, and we'll post your social media links as well, where people can find us. And I got to say, the one I love is the with a little help from my friends, um, because I just you know uh, to to the first one to listen to Tom Dean, who you know I just Castle is 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 one of my you know favorite bands in the country, absolutely exactly, uh, and, and then um, you know I haven't listened to the, the second one yet, but Darren Davis, right? I mean. Broken right. Arrow. I mean, like, what can you say, right? I mean, you 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 know that very well, having having uh, having taught there. Um, so I just I think it's it's really cool that people can go and tune in and listen and you know, just hear from these folks that you may never have that opportunity to sit down and talk to. Um, and and this provides that great opportunity. So so really kudos to you guys for this broad variety of, of great programming. Um, and another one of those pieces of programming is one that's that's kind of near and dear to my heart is the advocacy and action program that you have that that uh, is not new, but we, I guess you could say it's an infant. Uh, it's been around for a couple of years here, um, and you guys have done a great job highlighting that on your social media lately too. So give us the the, the sketch of what that program is. We want to get people involved in that and tune into that. 
Yeah, no, and, and you are another advocacy guru and, and just Jedi there. And again, you're, uh, we're just thankful to have you, Mark, being involved in our Advocacy in Action um, advisory team. But um, do want to provide awareness, so thank you for the opportunity to speak about it. It is a signature program of Music for All, and it is designed really to collect and recognize and share effective practices uh, that mm -hmm. support, obviously, music education. Um, it's different than some other, I think, advocacy initiatives that tend to point to uh, statistics and data. And, and of course, it's always, you know, that's important. You know, the, 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 the data and the numbers and the, and, the, and the research behind it. And of course, our great friends from the National Association for Music Education uh, and the NAM Foundation, both are just superheroes when it comes to, um, you know, standing up for uh, edu music education and music educators on Capitol Hill uh, and, and, and beyond. And the advocacy pieces that those organizations bring are, uh, we, uh, we collaborate with them uh, very frequently, as you know. But Advocacy in Action for Music for All is, is designed to be a little bit more of a, a, a practical as examples, so, you know, a clearinghouse. Uh, and we've used an awards program to sort of dangle the carrot and to uh, inspire, uh, you know, people are competitive a little bit, you know, to, to see some award winning examples and go, well, we've got something too that we wanna share. Uh, so certainly we celebrate the winners uh, but we hope that more than anything, it inspires others to take action in their own programs and their own communities, almost, you know, similar to, again, I'm going to mention our friends at NAM, their best communities for music education program, um, you know, shines a spotlight on those, uh, those are advocating uh, in their, in their world. Um, so we're doing that and you will see on our, you know, if you uh, follow us on social, social media, music for all, or, uh, uh, Bands of America, Orchestra America, we have um, recognized some winners in our six categories. So we have six categories that include um, recruitment and retention, uh, community engagement, marketing and promotion, parent booster involvement, fundraising and sponsorship, and uh, decision maker interaction. And um, those six categories, my approach really has been to almost treat them like a lesson plan, you know, music educators or program designers to approach their program as the CEO of their program and to consider sort of those six pillars when working to develop a well-rounded program. You know, advocacy needs to be, you know, thought of as a, as a wellness routine rather than a 911 emergency. Oh my gosh, our program is being cut. And I think that if you were looking at those six categories, uh, you know, pretty frequently through, through your approach to your music program, um, you will hopefully be not just uh, surviving, but like we like to say is, is, is thriving. Um, so we are, um, as you mentioned, continuing to uh, spotlight those winners from the last uh, cycle of uh, applications. Um, though I will say I don't want... Uh, I don't, I'm not tone deaf to the fact that the uh, environment that we live in now has changed drastically. So when you see some of these examples, uh, these winning examples that folks have done, you know, in the classroom, you can certainly look at it and go, well, I don't know how I can do that right now. You know, I tend to kind of go, if I can get a great idea and massage it even and go, well, I like right. what this person did, but if I could uh, tweak it a little bit and run with it, uh, that's where we are. I think now more than ever, um, our advocacy and action program needs to kind of, you know, focus on, I've been using the, the term advocacy now, like what are folks doing now to um, make their students the, uh, spotlight their students to be the celebrities of their community, uh, but also what are they doing to, to emphasize the importance of, uh, of that curricular subject. And, um, and so I think that uh, just like anything, the Advocacy in Action program that we're doing uh, will probably evolve and organically uh, turn into, you know, become what uh, the profession needs. 
but certainly uh, hope that uh, those uh, tuning in will check out uh, advocacy.musicforall.org uh, because the best thing about it, I think, aside from the fact that it's free, is that it's just like, you know, whether you go to recruitment and retention or you go to community engagement, you're seeing these examples. Yeah, we talked about the winners, but the assets that are, um, you know, attached to the example shows you exactly, you know, whether it's uh, PDF documents, videos, photos, the, the, the supplemental materials about how they did it and how it impacted yeah. and, and, and the, the rationale behind it is, is, is probably truly the most important piece of it. And that's what makes this one so unique. Uh, like you said, there's other awards programs out there, but this, like this is the, okay, yeah, it's an awards program, but go look and you can see the how. You can drill down and then that's where you can take what might work for your program or, or at the very least to get you thinking of some ideas. It's not just ABC School did great in this area. Here's how they did it and not just here's the title of what they did. Here are the, the assets. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's programs out there that you and I don't know that sure. are, there's a, there's, an, there's a master teacher out there that is doing something just so creative when it comes to, you know, community engagement or fundraising and sponsorship that it's like, share that story so that others can uh, be inspired and also replicate it, so... And I think it's just, it's another example of what, of the good work that you guys are doing to really connect folks in all segments of, of the world that, that we live in, in, in music education. So, okay. So I'm going to throw out the last question to you, which is the one that I kind of throw out to everyone. And I, I put the caveat of, you know, we're not going to hold you to this, uh, in two years when we, when we look back at all these videos, but, um, he, here we are, it's July 7th, uh, you know, getting closer to school starting, but still a lot of unknowns for even the fall for the next year, the year beyond that. What's, uh, look into the James Stevens crystal ball. Uh, what, you know, what, what does the future potentially look like for all of us in the music ed space? You know, that's, that's such a hard thing. And again, that's why you're saying crystal ball. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were approaching the fall in terms of our marching band uh, programming with, you know, stay the course and, and uh, if we build it, they will come. Uh, but there's just been more and more, uh, you know, numbers escalating as, as folks have opened up for business uh, and things are looking um, bleak. And, and there's just, you know, a lot of concern out there. And a lot of the concern actually tra traces directly to, uh, school district, uh, you know, travel restrictions, you know, if they have to spread around the students on the bus so that they're not sitting next to each other or, you know, some of our uh, championship events, you know, Grand Nationals, you know, folks have hotel stays and, and so, or sometimes they, you know, we're sleeping on the gym floor like the, like the drum corps do. I mean, all those are looked at now as, um, with a certain eye of caution and, and concern. And so uh, we don't know exactly what, uh, what the fall will be, though uh, we continue to re wanna respond to what um, educators and students need. Uh, social emotional learning is, is, is a big piece, I think, that we all need to embrace. I mean, if you talk to, again, our buddy Scott Edgar, he'll remind you that it's something that has been around since the 90s, but it's, you know, the, 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 the fresh buzzword right now, because in, in many cases, just to be blunt, it might be saving jobs and, and keeping the profession um, uh, vibrant and, and, uh, and, and, and necessary. Uh, because there's just, a, um, I know I'm pivoting from the answer to the question a little bit, but there's, there's students when we bring them back together and they come together, whether that's this fall or next school, whatever it is, they're all experiencing some sort of loss. You know, sure. they've, they've lost loved ones, they've lost monumental events. Um, there's, there's, there's a certain amount of uh, emotional needs that, uh, that have uh, need, uh, you know, attending to. And I think now more than ever, uh, the student need as always, has needs to be a priority, but I think now 
uh, we're looking at it differently. Um, for, from an organization standpoint, Mark, I mean, we've tried, you know, one of the biggest things that um, in the spring and so far this summer, folks have asked us is uh, how to teach music online if they're having to do it online. We saw lots of great examples this spring, uh, you know, having folks having to respond from March to the rest of the school year, but uh, you know, I'm sure even at progressive music and starting beginners is, is a thing that folks are looking at going, how do we do this? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know long-term if, if this is where we're going, but where we are right now, just as a, as an organization, music for all, um, we responded to that need and that question, um, with an instrumental instruction uh, online offering through uh, through Music Professor, right. um, and that's uh, high high quality lessons, all level students. I mean, it's literally beginner, intermediate, advanced. I mean, there's like, like I think a, a Texas All State Etudes in there at the advanced level. You know, it's it's there's uh, over five thousand different video lessons taught by some just fine fine faculty. Woodwinds, brass percussion, uh, music theory and conducting are, are in there as well. Um, and I, I guess I say that in relation to your question and that we're not uh, wanting to uh, minimize the importance of um, a private instructor um, or, or anything like that, you know, but that this might be an answer to um, whether it's in the classroom or remote learning or a blend of both, uh, something that is a resource, something is a tool. So I, I'm not so foolish to predict what I think is going to happen and are we gonna be back in school and what's the profession look like, but I think that through the lens of social emotional learning, um, I think that the profession uh, can and should and, and, and will be here. Uh, for a long time. The other part is that it is uh, no um, prediction, it's fact, I think, that some of our educators are some of the most creative people on the planet. And so uh, I think it was John Mackey, you know, band uh, composer who said something like recently, like, you know, this is uh, forcing us or offering us the opportunity to be as creative as we possibly can uh, you know, when, you know, if we can move from um, doom and gloom to, you know, and come up with the solutions to just, you know, how, we're, how we can do our job. If, if the administration or your school board is going, here are the parameters, uh, instead of just pulling your hair out and going, how can I possibly do that? Uh, the profession is, is awake more than ever. Uh, to lean on each other, composers in particular, I think right now, to just uh, offer um, advice and recommendations. So I think that uh, to a certain level, it is daunting, it is challenging, I'm not gonna lie, it is scary, mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's like if you've been dealt this, you've been dealt it because I think that you can handle it. And if we can come out on the other end, uh, stronger and better than ever, um, let's do everything we can to make that happen. So I, I, I feel like I've, uh, in a politician's answer, <laughs> dodged your question perhaps, but I, it's, you know, um, I'll, I'll, last thing I'll say, I think, is that the, I think it's Susan Smith, one of our um, dear uh, educational consultants, said we we have to we have to abandon the idea of you're a band director or a choir director. It's 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 music teacher first right. and foremost, figuring out how we're going to inspire um, students. Greg Bim, who's a great friend who teaches uh, in Illinois, Marion Catholic High School. Um, you know, shared with me this past spring on a phone call. He's like, James, I'm doing some amazing music history, playing recordings sure. for kids, talking yeah. about theory and things that, uh, you know, we never really had the time for. I mean, you know, 
you can make the time, I guess, but it's like you, 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 you pivot and uh, it's just, it's been rewarding for him. It's been rewarding for his students. So I think um, to just uh, be open-minded and, and, and a fresh approach and to the young music educators out there who said, I want to go do this because of what they experienced and now the world has changed. I also think that the, 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 uh, the people entering the profession right now can probably help us uh, more than ever with, with creativity and an open-mindedness uh, where sometimes uh, seasoned, some seasoned educators sure. who get, uh, you know, kind of in their, in their groove, uh, hopefully even the, the, the younger folks can maybe um, give us, uh, give us some hope and give us some, uh, some great uh, creative uh, nuance. And I, I let, let me sum up your answer by saying, I, I just think that that this is probably, I like what you said, here's, here's a fact, not a prediction. The, the fact is that um, everyone's gonna have to adapt and that is going to breed, breed a lot of creativity. So I, I think that educators will adapt. It's obvious Music For All has adapted. From, from minute one when you were in the concert band festival and had to pivot and adapt. But as you've continued, uh, you guys have certainly shown that, that, that you're adapting. Um, I will again, we'll, we'll, we'll provide all the links, but I'll tell people again, musicforall.org, and you can find all those sub links there of the education and the advocacy stuff. Um, check, check out what they're doing, follow them on social media. Uh, a lot, lot of really great stuff to serve the students, and to serve the, the profession. Um, James Stevens, Director of Advocacy and Educational Resources at Music for All, thank you for taking the time um, to be with us. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Mark. It's uh, been a pleasure. Thanks so much. All right, and for all of you, we'll see you next time, and make sure you check out uh, all of the resources.